This is a video lecture for Math 110 for Wednesday, April 22nd. This is part one of our video lecture. I'll post a part two as well. The topic for today is the law of sines. Last class we talked about uh, right triangles. We learned about the Pythagorean theorem. And I introduced you guys to three basic trig functions, which are sine, cosine, and tangent. And we talked about how to solve a right triangle. Uh, a right triangle is a triangle in which one of the angles is 90 degrees. This is a right triangle. And as an example, let's say that one of the sides had a length of 10 and the other side had a length of 6. Okay. Hopefully you guys feel comfortable solving for all the angles and sides of this right triangle. We could use the Pythagorean theorem and use our trigonometric functions to find all the angles and the un these two angles and this unknown side. Okay. But the question arises, what if we have a triangle that is non-right? Okay, so the law of sines is used to solve, to solve for triangles that are non-right triangles. Meaning triangles that don't have an angle that's equal to 90 degrees. And the fact is, most triangles you would encounter in life are not right triangles. So we need a way to solve for all the angles and sides of a non-right triangle. And that's where the law of sines comes into play. Then we'll also talk about the law of cosines, which is another tool we can use. What I want to do right now is derive the law of sines. And to do this, I'm going to do a... Uh, you're not responsible for this derivation on, on a test, except possibly for extra credit. But it is a neat, short little derivation, so I wanted to show you guys this derivation. So we'll draw a triangle here that is a non-right triangle, okay, and this is angle A. This angle is close to 90, but it's actually less than 90, okay, B and C. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to label the three angles of our triangle, A, B, and C. And then our three sides are uh, A, B, and C. And the way this works is the sides... The side is across from the angle, so if this is angle A, we label this lowercase side length A. Angle C here, this is lowercase side length C, and so on. So this is, this is a, a triangle, it's non-right. How do we solve it? Uh, how do we, or I should say, we're going to derive the law of sines here. And to do that, what I'm going to do here is we drop down a, a line here, a fictitious line, that is, uh, that is perpendicular to side length C. So now I've created created some right angles here. So I've taken one triangle that was non-right, and by dropping down this perpendicular line, I've created two right triangles, one here and one here. And then what I can do is I can uh, then use the, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this uh, the length of this perpendicular H. And then what I can do is, is uh, take the sine of angle A. Now if you guys remember, on a right triangle, the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite, okay, over the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle A is equal to H, the length of my perpendicular, divided by side length B, which is the hypotenuse. And I can solve this equation for H, so this means H equals B times sine of angle A. But I can also apply this, I can take the sine of angle B, I can also jump over to this triangle, and take the sine of angle B. So sine of angle B equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's the definition of a sine, okay, on a right triangle. You have to have a right triangle, which we do here. We have two right triangles. Sine of angle B equals A over, uh, excuse me, H, H over A. And if we solve this for H, we get A sine of B, okay. And now we use what's called the transitive property. If you have something that's equal to something else, and that same something is equal to a third thing, okay, since H is equal to B sine of A, and H is also equal to A sine of B, there's something called the transitive property of logic, which says that then B sine of A has to equal A sine of B. So these two have to equal each other. So this means that we have B sine of A, equals A sine of B. Okay, and at this point, um, what I'm going to do is divide both these sides by AB. Is that legal? Can I divide both these sides by AB? Sure I can, as long as I do the same thing the other side. 
If I do that, the B's cancel out here, and the A's cancel out here, and this leads us to something that says sine of A over A equals sine of B over B, okay? And this is the law of sines. So this is a quick little derivation of the law of sines. Um, and now what I can do is I use this little uh, perpendicular to derive this formula, but now I can erase it now that I have my formula because there's no H appearing in my formula. Let's go back to our original triangle here. So what the law of sine says is the sine of angle A, so it, the sine of an angle of a triangle divided by this, the length of the side that's opposite to the angle equals the sine of another angle of the triangle divided by the length of the side that's opposite to that angle, so sine of B over B. And in fact, we can even take this further and we can also write this as sine of C over C. This is the law of sines for a triangle. Okay, It relates the angles and sides of a non-right triangle. And in fact, uh, another version of the law of sines is you can invert this whole equation. You can take the reciprocal of this whole equation. And this leads us to A over sine of A equals B over sine of B equals C over sine of C. Okay. This is an alternate, alternate version of the law of sine. Sometimes this is more useful, sometimes this is more useful. Same equation, same law. Um, and you don't have to memorize this, so I'll give this to you guys, but you do need to know how to use it to solve some problems. So this is the, concludes the first part of our video lecture on a little derivation of the law of sines and the motivation for the law of sines. In the second part, I'm going to solve two example problems.